All right, so we are looking at 2024 NFL scouting combine prospects, invitees. According to NFL.com, they got 321 of those guys showing up. And I shouldn't say showing up, they're invited. We're not really sure if they're all going to show up. Um, some might only do the testing. Maybe some might be just doing the uh, field drills, position drills. And then some might just be there to do the meetings and interviews. So uh, some people are injured, but 321. So you know, almost all these guys are probably going to be drafted. Um, so it's obviously important to watch. Keep up, at least keep up with how these guys progressed and test it out. <sighs> Running through here, not a big list of tight ends. Offensive line group should be massive. Good. Saw some good names in there. D line should be pretty big. Probably missing a few in there that, yeah, this should probably be a little bit longer. Solid group for the linebackers. D back should be huge. Seeing some good names there, but also, so yeah. All right, well, let's take a look here. Let's start off at the top. Quarterback group, decent. Um, let's see, Daniels, there's May. There's Williams. So they're all three of the big guys are showing up. Plus you got McCarthy, Penix, Nix. Anybody that sh really needs to probably improve their stock would probably be Joe Milton and Bo Nix there. Milton can't. I'm not saying he has to, but he, he can probably with his testing. I don't think he's going to run really anything. Maybe like a 4.7 in the 40. His his vert and his other testing might be pretty decent. Uh, Nix, not necessarily he has to. Uh, he's got a good athletic profile. Maybe he can, you know, maybe come in a little bit better than expected. But I think his interviews and obviously his uh, field drills are probably going to be big for him. Penix is probably can get hurt, I think, in this way, both physically and on the score sheet. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe I guess, if his agility is better than expected, and that's if he tests it, maybe that puts some people at ease with his ability to handle a, a you know, a NFL pocket not have a pristine pocket that he had pretty much all the time at Washington. I guess Pratt could probably improve uh, his stock. Rattler can confirm that he's better than expected. And you know what's interesting? Oh, Jordan, there's Jordan Travis. So Jordan Travis, I did. He was one of my, well, he was my basically my top sleeper, if that makes any sense. Um, he got the um, Dak Prescott, Trey Lance injury with the ankle, snapped it, twisted it to the side. So not I'm well. I'm sorry. Pretty sure he's not going to be testing or doing anything physical, but he's going to be there probably for obviously the interviews and meetings. Um, I guess McCarthy could probably prove that he's a better athlete than projected. I don't think his measurables are going to help him out. He does not have big hands, uh, and that to me actually counts. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, to me, like, gr I'd grade McCarthy in terms of his performance. Kind of like a late date, uh, second round, third round pick. But because of the position value, he's probably going to be a first rounder. And he's young. So, and you know what? I'll also say this. It's not like in Michigan, it's like a high-flying, you know, offense. So, you know, they're a run first, which is okay. Um which is fine. And he led that offense. So there's things to say there, but it's not like, you know, it's Caleb where he's throwing all over the place because he has to McCarthy didn't have to do it. And he was instructed to run a good solid offense with a good fullback and two really good running backs and an amazing offensive line. Now, why should that hurt McCarthy's stock? That's not really fair. So I, I think he might be a first rounder. I, I, I might I was actually thinking the Jets might grab him just because he can he's young and he can stick sit one or two years behind uh, Rogers and lo learn some things. He's mobile. He's athletic. He's he can do it. So that'll be interesting to see how he tests out in terms of running backs. These there's gonna be some freaks in here. There's Lauby. I don't care what anybody says. I had him first. He's ridiculously fast. I'm happy they brought him in. Someone did their homework. 
There you go. One of your best receiving backs in the entire draft. Like, he's a legit third down dude. Like, that's what they brought him in for at Arizona. He can run the ball, but that's what they brought him in for is receiving. He's fast, too. So, I'm saying, like, you know, fast. Or they're very athletic, right? Explosive. Meaning, they're going to be there, and they're going to put on a show. NFL, you know, is going to be like, oh, look how fast this guy is. Or, you know, you know, it gets... They're going to do their thing, right? Because they can't just say, oh, that guy ran kind of fast. And like, you have to kind of promote him a little bit more than just, like, that was a good time. Um, Zay Davis should put up good numbers. Blake Corum should put up, like, a four, high 4-4, four, four, low 4-5. Four, um, big thing for him is to see where his 10-yard is. Benson's going to fly. He'll probably run a 4-4. Four, four. Braylon Allen will run, like, a probably a high 4-4, four, four, maybe a 4-5. But keep in mind, he's, like, 6'3", 240. High 230s. Um, I love him for the Patriots, especially now. I mean, I liked him before that, but now, especially with um, AVP coming in and probably establishing a better run offense, you're going to want a guy like Braylon Allen. Um, obviously, if we don't know if we're bringing Zeke back, but then also you get some Ramondre Stevenson um, insurance next year. I think he's a good idea. Trey Benson's a good idea. I wouldn't mind Blake Corum or Zay Davis. Ray Davis is good too. Edwards is actually not bad. Oh, Estimate should put up a good number too. He should be fast and all all around should be a good at, um, good good time at uh, the uh, performance at the combine. Irving's fast as well. This should this should be a good a good year for running backs. Last year you obviously had top end running backs were amazing, right? This year you have a lot of guys that could be day two, early day three picks. I am not seeing. Blake though did they really snub Blake I think they did they snubbed Blake Watson yikes that stinks he's a really another good receiving back I was going to hope that him and um, Wiley should would be great in the field drills so the guys that I think could probably boost their stock I think Benson's not getting enough, and Allen's not getting enough. Zay Davis should do good. Estimate should probably get a bump from his testing. Lauby will probably throw in some good numbers. Maybe his his uh, shuttle and three cone will be good. Obviously, his field drills are going to be impressive as well. And then Cody Schrader looks pretty good, but I think the guys that could put like at least go completely completely off the radar, um, Robinson and then Jalen Wright. I don't want to say Jalen Wright's off the radar, but you know, guys that can probably really pump pump themselves up would be him. Same thing with Shipley. He's underrated, in my opinion. Um, I think a lot of scouts probably see him as a, it's his day two pick, but he might bleed over to day three. There's, it's You know what? It's not, and that's the thing. Like, some of these guys are graded, like, really high end. Like, Braylon Allen is probably a solid day two pick. He won't probably go until day three just because of how loaded the wide receiver and offensive tackle groups are this year and how important those are and how dry and barren those drafts have been for about two or three years now, you're going to have a, a, an absolute flood to get those the offensive tackles and uh, wide receivers this year, I think. And like I said, I had, like I think, 32, uh, 32 guys I would put in the top 100 as wide receivers, as in terms of their grade, right? So, like, top day one day two picks 30 of them so and that being said like i guarantee i'm gonna have like probably four or five guys that are not on this list that should be there be and the thing is is i they all these guys are gonna get drafted i'm looking at these names i'm not seeing any bums in here all these guys could go to the right team there's obviously your like really cream right we got Arguably, I mean, I shouldn't say arguably. I think he's definitely the best player in the draft, and I think it's starting to become obvious that he is, is Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, he should run four threes, jump near the high 40s, crazy everything. Everything should be crazy here for him. Um, your top, besides that, you're probably your next best tester would probably is, is probably going to be Neighbors, actually. Uh, Dunze should be a good a tester. Brendan Rice should be an amazing tester. Um, Keon Coleman should have some good numbers. Not all of them, probably. Same thing with Malachi Corley. Good, good here and there. Franklin should be a good speedster. 
probably in like the four threes. Leggett should be probably in the high four threes, low four fours. McCaffrey in the four 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 five. Same thing with McConkey. Should be like four five four six. McMillan should be in the low four fours. Bub Mean should be in the four fours. Adonai Mitchell, which should be in the probably four fives, maybe high four fours. Same thing with Pearsall. Polk, same thing. Thomas, same thing. Thrash, a little bit slower, but but not by much. Same thing with Tez. Washington, both Washingtons should have low one fives on their ten yard splits. Weaver's even like probably a high four four. And same thing with Whittington. He's he's just I mean this guy because where the people he's on the team with kind of gets overlooked, but he can probably run the high four fours. Same thing with Williams. Uh, Wilson probably four five ish, but considering he's six seven, that's freakish. Roman should be in the four fours, and Xavier Worthy's the fastest out of all these guys, I think. Yeah, him and Franklin should probably be the fastest. McMillan's also in there. Leggett. Yeah, I mean, you might have five guys in the four threes if a dunes they really can done it. And same thing with neighbors. I got like five guys that really should run in the four threes, and then probably like another four or five guys that might be at that just just missing it. Um, in terms of guys that can probably make a big boost in their stock, uh, if Bear, if Burton can run there, he might. He's a really good deep threat. So if his speed really can match his prowess at catching deep balls, he'll probably get a bump. Coker can probably get a bump. Um, I think these guys are kind of known. Same thing with Cowing. Flournoy has been. He's a freak. This guy will put up good numbers. That's why they brought him in. Um, He's got, he's got decent numbers at Southeast Missouri, so it, I could see him probably getting a little bit more. I don't say bump from the scouts, but possibly just a little bit more exposure to the media and the fans. You know, be one of those you know combine darlings. Um, he's shifty. He'll probably have a good vert. Yeah, but I guess maybe you know what Bub means. I like him. I think he's one of those guys that we should probably think about. Like maybe, well, I mean, you could probably target him in the fifth if we haven't picked up a second wide receiver yet. But I would maybe try to hold out for like that sixth or seventh. Yeah, I mean, Pearsall's been alright. Pearsall, sorry. This guy, you know what? Yeah, he can. Pro if his numbers are good and his his uh, field drills are great. He can bump up a lot. He's under the radar. He's a really good slot guy. He hasn't been talked about too much. Oh, Devon Vili, yes. Nice. Someone did their homework. Uh, I think he missed a few games this year. He's a big dude and fast. Nice call, whoever did that one. Nice call. Maybe Tez Walker can boost his stock. I mean, he didn't have a really great senior, but this guy, keep an eye on him. I have him on my. Uh, I'm doing a video for him for um, sleepers, and he's one of them. So there's a few guys that are on this list. There's I have on my sleeper video, like Cornelius. He's another guy that's kind of just under the radar, and it was um, Tavian to be another one, and then the two Washingtons are underappreciated. Weaver's underappreciated. All these guys should be drafted. Like, and same thing with Whittington and Williams. Like, this group right here for me, plus him, all these guys are kind of, you know, running under the, ra or under the radar right now. In terms of you, in terms of fans, and probably to most of the media. Because although, you know, these people, you know, you, all of a sudden you start hearing all these people having opinions about these guys. And it's like, how many, how many guys out there really sat there and watched Anthony Gould? Right? Not too many. Most people don't even know who Ryan Flournoy is. Right? Now, I'm also going to point out, I'm seeing a bunch of guys. I Like, here's another one. How many people know who Jalen Coker is? I mean, maybe if you're local in Northeast, but he's going to test out, and all of a sudden you're going to hear, you know, uh, what's-his-face Steve Smith start talking about how this guys he's been watching Jalen Coker. It's like, give me a break. Um... There are some people that definitely got snubbed here, though. Hayden Hatton would be one. Joshua Cephas is one. Um, I think they probably should have tried to bring in Jaquan Burton. Um, 
he would have tested out great. Taewon Palmer would be another dude that should be there. Um, and if they wanted to be really cool, probably should have brought in Wade and Ruby from Mount Union. D3, but he's a freak and he's got the numbers. So, but you could only have so many wide receivers, I guess, but you could probably get to add another five, five guys in here that would have helped out. Like, they wouldn't have just been like sympathy. Like, they would have added to the show. Tight ends, not a big group, but pretty solid. Um, Brock Bowers, I think he can probably prove that he's a top five because if his testing numbers are very similar to most of these guys, then all of a sudden it's not like, well, he's a good tight end. It's like, oh, no, he's just an offensive weapon because he's a better blocker than all these guys. He can play in more, in more positions, more alignments than those guys. So if he's got testing numbers that are similar to these guys, he runs in like the four fives. Yeah. So he's got something to prove. Uh, Bell, I think, needs to show that he's fast. Holker would be a good one to watch out for. Um, J. Taming Sanders is probably your next best athlete out of all these. Sinnott, yeah. I mean, also, uh, Jared Wiley, I guess, if his testing numbers are solid. We haven't seen Kate Stover in a while, so maybe him in the four fives would be good. Um, probably a sleeper in this group. There's a few of them, but I think this one's probably... He's a big dude. If he can show that he can move, that'd be good for him. He's more of a wide receiver. So if his... I, maybe you could see if his uh, field field drills show that he's a little bit more of a solid H-back rather than just a uh, split uh, slot tight end. Uh, yeah. Anybody else in here? Is anybody getting snubbed here? Probably not. <laughs> All right, offensive lineman, huge group. Right off the bat, obviously, Joe Alt we're looking at, but then Kieran, a mega gadgy. I need to see his numbers. He was injured, um, so I don't know how he's looking, if he's been spending time getting ready for this, but he's somebody that can maybe lose. If his testing isn't that good, he can probably lose some draft stock. Barton's another one. I mean, the guy's a really good technical offensive lineman. It'd be great if his testing backs that up. Cooper BB, we haven't seen. Um, I expect his numbers to be phenomenal. Uh, especially, I mean, and his on field drills should look good too. JVN Cohen's another like, guy that can probably get a good boost from this. Brandon Coleman should test out like a beast. Same thing with Frank Crum. I think mean, Dank was the biggest dude in the whole entire uh, draft, basically. I think he's, what is he, 6'8", six, six, low 370s, high 360. If he can show that he can move, that's good. That's the big thing. It's just to prove that you can move, be a big dude and move, and not just be a liability. Because once you get to the NFL, dude, like, I'll take the guy who's 6'6", 320, versus the 6'8", six 370 six, guy. Because if you can't, dude, if you're kick step, you're getting smoked, doesn't matter how big you are because I can just I can move I can move a few extra inches quicker than you can it doesn't matter if you got an extra few inches of reach it doesn't matter if my first step is half a second quicker than yours that's several feet so it doesn't matter if you're you can be nine feet tall I'm still gonna beat you if you're slow uh, Ethan Driscoll Marshall he can probably yeah he needs to probably move prove he can move good call bringing Israel in I love that guy Someone's been doing their homework for the combine here. He'll test out great. Same thing with Olu Fashano. He'll be a he'll move. He'll he might have one of the top forties out of all the offensive linemen. Fish will be great to see where he's at. Yeah, Spring and Flaxen. Nice. Foster. Okay. Good to see. I want to see how he moves. He's a center, but he hurt himself towards the end of the year. Um, I, I think he yeah, he did participate in the senior bowl, but it'd be nice to see where he's at. He's a good guard. I haven't seen him since his injury. I'm not sure if he'll be testing out or not. Glaze, there's he. He's a good uh, guard. I'd like that. Ah, nice. They brought in Greenfield. Okay. He might be one of the fastest. Guyton's good. Okay. CJ Hansen, as a as a guard, he'll move. Nice. I want to see where Haynes at. Good. Christian Jones, there we go. This is a good group, guys. Okay. JC Latham. 
Oh, good center. Matt Lee's a good center. Mahogany, there you go. Sorry. And McCormick. Both of these guys. Good both of them being good guards. Underrated. Mims. Haven't seen him in a while. Big dude. Oh, they brought in Jacob Monk. Someone's been doing their homework. Jacob Monk's a beast. Center for Duke. Um, I have him on my sleeper list for interior offensive linemen. I haven't done that yet. I'll get to it, but maybe, maybe he won't be a sleeper. He won't be a sleeper after this is done. But uh, you heard here first, guys. Jacob Monk. Keep an eye. Patrick Paul's in. Good, good. He'll probably bench 30 something times in the just crazy amount of reps. Um, his arms are like 31 inches long and he's got a big barrel chest. His range of motion is probably like four or five inches on the bench. He'll probably blast out 30 easy. Whereas Walter Roos probably might get, if he could bench 30, that'd be impressive. Even though he's a bigger dude than Jackson Powers, his arms are massively long. His range of motion is probably a foot and a half, which is harder, right? Uh, Kingsley, that's probably out of all the offensive linemen, he's probably the one that's going to probably, him and Su um, Olufashanu it's always the weird last names um, those guys should show up and have probably be those, you know, the guys that they want to highlight um, he's a good uh, center, can play guard as well good, good, another underrated center who can play both guard too, so Guys to keep an eye on. If you can, if he, if these guys, see the thing is, if these guys drop, these guys are probably second, third round grades, right? If you can get them in like the fifth or sixth round, it's like, oh man, it just, it just becomes at a point where you're like, it's too hard to pass these guys by. Um, they are bringing Caden Wallace in. Nice. Zach Zinter, I'm not sure. He injured, I think it was a shoulder injury. It, so it'd be interesting where he's, see where he's at, if he's even ready. Um, anybody who's getting snubbed there. Kyle Hergel from Boston College would be a great addition here. Guard and can play some tackle. Gabe Wallace from Buffalo. He should be on there. I bet he would test out pretty well. Um, oh, and Nick Coria from Rhode Island. He should be on there too. Um, Sundell's in there, which is good. Oh, Sincere Hainsworth from Tulane. Is he on here? No. Again, another like four or five guys you probably would have put on here that would have made it a lot better. Shoot. I shouldn't say a lot better. Would have added to it. Would, you know, not again, not sympathy, just bring them in, but like made it better. Alright, defensive lineman. Let's see. Oh, in terms of, oh, by the way, back here, guys that can probably, re again, make a big, I mean, uh, Omega Gaji and then Gonzalez. Where are they? Where are you? There you are. Him, the, those two guys can probably really make a big, Zach Frazier be another guy, just because they're coming off injury. Um, and then Dankwa, Crum, Driscoll, this group right here, they're big, tall dudes. If they can prove they can move, that'd be big, because they can go from maybe... UDFA slash, uh, you know, late day three and, you know, give themselves a good bump. And then I guess Barton, BB, a lot of these guys who are juniors that are coming out this year. Um, Joe Wall, obviously, guys we haven't seen in a long time. Latham, Mims. Yeah, a lot of these guys could probably give a good, nice little bump in their stock. I mean, Suwata Matia is kind of... This is, yeah, you know what? He's probably a great example. I think he's a fringe first-rounder on tape, and I think his testing is going to basically move him up into, like, you know, maybe in the 30s, high 40s. He can probably get a bump from this. Caesar probably could because he'll test out great. Tyler Davis is going to impress. Dorless is going to impress. 
these two guys should have a field day. Um, Fisk will too, especially on the bench. He might be one of those guys who hits in the mid-30s on the bench. He's got, again, another dude that's super strong. Big barrel chest, short arms. He'll bang them out. Um, Gabe Hall is another guy that's probably going to have good numbers that could give himself a good boost. Jalex Hunt probably should have some decent numbers for his position. Javante G. Baptiste. Chris Jenkins probably should be the Kalaja Kansi of this draft. Uh, he'll probably have awesome numbers and be one of the guys, oh, look how, look how awesome this guy is. It's like, yeah. Uh, Speed, Neyland, and uh, Kamara Neyland should probably have good times. Same thing with La Leatu Latu. This is a beast. Beast group. He'll test good. Byron Murphy should test like a be absolute freak. Same thing with Jerry Newton. <gasps> Okianoma, they brought... Wow! They did their homework. Or they're ripping off my work, maybe. Um, Ruka Horahora, he'll test out great. Chop Robinson will test out... He probably needs a bump. He's been dormant. Like, no one's heard about him for a long time. Chop Robinson, if he put on... He can put on a show. He'll bump up. Darius Robinson should have an awesome day. Mason Ro Smith, another guy that you guys probably don't know about. Unfortunately, I haven't got around to doing his video. He's a freak. He is basically Christian Barmore. Um, I think he would be, if you can get him in like the fourth or fifth round, he would be one of the few defensive tackles I'd really want to consider going after. He is ultra long, explosive. He's just raw, and he got injured last year. And it took a while for him to get back into it. Um, he's another guy that's going to probably have awesome numbers. <clears throat> Sweat will be interesting to see how he moves. He'll be another guy that puts on absolute freak numbers, probably in the high 4.3s, low 4.4s for his size. Insane. Verse will have a good time. He's fast. Trice we haven't heard too much from in a while. Eric Watts getting a... <clears throat> it's good that they're bringing him in. He's He fits the build. He's 6'6", six, six, like 270-something. He should be in here. It's just this last year was kind of disappointing for me. I thought he was going to have a great year. Um, I'm happy he'll get a shot. Linebackers. Is there anybody missing from that one? I think they probably should have brought Sonny Anderson in. That would have been good. That's about it, though, right? They got most of the top guys in there. If they got Sonny Anderson. That would have been probably uh, some, yeah. Justin Rogers gone. There's a few, I don't want to say duds in here, but they could have made it a little bit more interesting with some of the other guys that probably would test out a little bit better. All right, backers, Chris Braswell. He'll test out like a beast. Oh, yes, good call, bringing him in. Underrated, super sleeper. Chris Jacobs, another, here, Tyrese Knight, another underrated guy. The Murphy, Gabriel Murphy, he can play everywhere in the front seven. I'm not joking, so... Maybe his testing brings it boosts his stock. Dallas Turner's not getting any respect. People, I mean, again, a lot of these guys have just really not been involved in the pre-draft process up until now, at least in terms of, like, the public eye. So some of these guys, it's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's like a top 10 pick. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Same thing with, like, Leato Latu. Um, you know, guys that have been kind of just out of the eye right now. He'll test out like a B. Same thing with Watson and Peyton Wilson. Probably be one of those draft dar uh, combine darlings. Anybody missing from that linebacker group? Dallas Gant from Toledo. Uh, oh, Richard Gibbonor from Troy. Why is he not in here? Did they have him at. Did I miss him at the edge? No. Didn't bring Richard Gibbonor in. Jeez, come on, guys. All right, defensive backs. Uh, good slot guy. He's getting finally getting some appreciation. He came in strong at the end of the year. These guys should test out great. Cole Bishop. I'll be. You know what? I maybe he'll test out better than I thought he would. Uh, ooh. Good call bringing him into the fold here. Whoever picked him up. He is kind of like my sleeper for a potential replacement for Duggar. Um, 
playing style and build very similar. Not as good, but maybe can grow into it. And there's my favorite guy in the whole part of the whole draft, Cooper DeGene. Awesome defensive back. He'll show up. He'll have a great day. Uh, Willie Drew, underrated, because he's from Virginia State, so kind of goes under the radar there. Cam Hart will have a good good testing. Um, Jackson and James will do pretty well as well. Cameron Kitchens, another guy that's kind of not been talked about. It'll be good to see where he's at. Kool-Aid, another guy that hasn't been talked about too much. Uh, Melton and Mitchell had great senior bowls. Same thing with Mustafa. All three of these guys should put up amazing numbers. Newbin should. Good to see him. Haven't seen him in a while. Old Dapo's. I like him in the late rounds. Tyler Owens finally getting on here. He'll test out like a beast. TJ Tampa. I have him as like almost a first round corner, but I, some people have him as like a third rounder. It's nuts. Uh, Vaki, you should have an awesome, awesome testing. James Williams, also uh, Evan Williams, good. He needs to prove it. I think he needs to prove it to me. People have him as a first rounder. I mean, he looks all, like he's savvy and he's skilled enough, but I think he really needs to prove that he can keep up with NFL wide receivers. Kalen King could probably prove that he's, you know, he had a rough senior bowl. He went from like basically a first rounder to like maybe like day three now. So he can boost his stock if he shows up. Anybody else that needs that needs something to help him out? Kalen Bullock would be another guy. He's a good safety. That really is not getting too much of attention. Hicks, another one, another safety, not getting too much of attention. Okay. Oh, Elijah Jones. Let's say Johnson. Two guys there. Yeah, again, a lot of underrated dudes. Carlton Johnson. There's this is a good group. Josh Newton, another guy that's just not getting... Like, you watch his footwork, he's amazing. The guy can flip his hips easy. Anybody get snubbed here? Oh, yeah. In terms of D-backs, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, PJ Jules didn't get in there. There ain't no Jules. Nope. Javon Morgan? Nope. Trevor Williams? No. AJ Woods? Nope. Roberts? Willie Roberts? Nope. Yeah, there's a lot of guys missing here. Did I miss anybody in D tackles? Did we go over that one? Briggs would be one. No Briggs. Stupid. Jalen Hutchins? Oh my gosh. No, they missed some here. Riley Mills. He's another one that I didn't think I saw in here. Nope. Christian Boyd. They didn't bring Christian Boyd in, huh? Yeah, defensive line. I mean, it's a big group. But again, you're missing out on some dudes that would definitely make this a lot a lot more interesting. Jeez. Stupid. Yep. They missed out there. But not bad. Not bad. Linebackers... Again, okay, defensive backs, and that's basically it. Um, so there's some guys in here. It's going to be tough because, you know what, this is, again, such a nice, tight, deep draft. So this is probably an important combine because there are so many freaks in it that if you can just differentiate yourself a little bit, you might be able to go from, um, this is not a joke, a day three to, like, maybe a mid-day two, which is a big, you know, big move. Um 
just to verify that you are. And then I think the other thing are, is there's a lot of expectations that these guys are going to be fast and powerful. And if you don't show up, then, you know, we'll just say, like, you can get Keishan Booty. Right? Dude should probably be, you know, hopefully he was supposed to run, like, the mid 4.4s. Four ran, like, a high 4.5. Didn't jump well. Didn't do anything well. And, you know, looked sluggish and went to, like, being probably late day two, early day three to, well, mid day three. There's not too many snubs. And where they did snub, it was it's a loaded draft. I think the ones that I'm probably more aggravated about is the defensive backs and some defensive linemen. There's some safeties that they could have brought in. Jules, Morgan, Williams. Uh, D-tackles. Elijah Chapman. Is he in there? No. Hutchins, Briggs, Riley Mills. Christian Boyd. A few linebackers. Gabe Wallace and Kyler Hergel would have made the offensive line a lot better. But anyway... Uh, for the Patriots, it's loaded. There's these are the, every, we need everything. So um, now, one more underrated things about the combine is watching these guys and how they prepare. Right, seeing that they're you know they've done their homework. You know they've walked out their steps. They've worked out their stands for their forty. They've done all those things. Now again, you might not think, oh, you know that's it's just them testing. It's not real football. Yeah, of course. It isn't a lab, but again, as a scout, you're looking for guys who do prepare. This is football. You don't just go out there and play pickup football, right? These guys have to do their homework about their opponent. They have to improve themselves and they do everything possible within the rules to become a better football player. This is a great example of this is something you're preparing for and you're going to do it as best as possible and you're going to show up and you're going to perform at the highest level. And it's going to be a high-stress environment, right? Everybody's looking at you at that one particular moment. How do you perform? And most importantly, if you do have a bad time or a bad attempt, can you rebound? Right? Because, yeah, you know, maybe on the score sheet you might have, like, a bad vertical. But if you're looking, I mean, a good scout can see there and be like, eh, you know, he, he messed up on his counter move twice, you know. He didn't have a good jump. He just messed up on his counter move. But I can see that he's got pop in his legs. Yeah. Okay. So you're not, you know, some of these numbers, it's like sometimes it's just if someone has a bad start, um, bad first move on their 20, on their 20 uh, yard shuttle, stuff like that. Good, good, you know, scouts can recognize that they're faster than advertised or more explosive than advertised. Right. So. That's one thing. Also getting measurements, the physicals, and then the interviews. That's also huge, right? Because this is 321 dudes. Again, this is going to be the majority. Uh, there's going to be some guys on the outside that will probably make into the draft. But you're looking at the majority of the guys that will be drafted this year. Anyway, um, I hope this was at least educational. I will definitely do probably an update just before the draft. I mean, the combine starts and then definitely do some reviews uh day to day i might even do some watch parties during while the combine's going on um anyway do you have any guys that you think that should be in here anybody who got snubbed um who are you looking at what are you looking at let me know in the comment section below if you like this content please like and subscribe and as always thanks for watching